Hey, what's up everybody? This is Pat Ogletree, your favorite traveling fishing coach. And in this video, I'm going to do a walkthrough of my kayak. I've had a lot of requests for this and people are wanting to see how I set it up to go fishing. Now, typically when I go out, I usually use the same exact setup every single time, no matter where I go, because I'm usually doing the same techniques, uh, searching for those same type of fish. So what I'm going to do is we'll start out with uh, talking about the actual kayak itself, and then we'll go from the front of the kayak all the way to the back, talking about the accessories, how I have it set up, and the reason why I have the things the way that they are. So here we go. Let's go right to the video. So this is the kayak itself. It's a 2019 Hobie Outback. Uh, the general specs on it is 12 foot 10 inches long. It's 34 inches wide. It weighs about 90 pounds empty and about 103 pounds with a drive in it. Then of course, you know, the, all the stuff that I have in it on top of it, probably about 140 pounds overall. Uh, it's an outstanding kayak. It's very fast. It's very maneuverable. It's very stable. Matter of fact, uh, if anything ever happened to this kayak, I would probably replace it with the same exact one. Now I do keep my net right on the bow, that way it's easy within reach, but it's not in the way. I'm not worried about this net falling off because it does float. I've done a review on it, I really like it. It is an Ego S1 Guide Series, and if you're looking for a good kayak net, I highly recommend it. But it goes right there on the bow when I'm out there fishing. I do have one rod holder in front of me to my left, and the reason why I only have one is when you have more than one, you typically, they get in the way whenever you're fighting a fish. So I do recommend just putting one, keep the rest behind you. This happens to be a Yak Attack Omega. It works really well. You can use it with spinning rods. You can use it with bay casters and fly rods. Now this is the drive itself. This is the actual pedal system. Now what's really cool about the Hobies is you can flutter kick it so you can go in really, really shallow water. But as you can tell, I've got a bungee cord attached to it. So that way, whenever I'm in shallow water I can put that bungee cord on there and keep those fins spread out so I don't hit the bottom now one thing I do recommend with any type of drive is make sure you have a lanyard attaching the drive to the kayak itself this one is connected with a quick disconnect so if I do pull the drive out of the kayak and it goes over the side I still have it connected and I'm not gonna lose the whole thing now over on this side, this is where I keep my GoPro that I use to film myself. So whenever I'm holding that fish up or if I'm doing any fishing tips, this is the camera that I use. Now the mount itself is kind of cobbled together with a bunch of different mounts, whether I've got some extensions in there and some ball mounts, but it articulates really well and that way I can get just the angle that I need. Now the pocket over to my right is where I always keep the same things. I keep my lip rippers, I keep leader material, and some extra soft plastics. You want to make sure and have stuff like that in the same area so when you go to reach for them, you'll know where they are and you don't have to hunt for them. Now my little cup holder that I have over the side, I'll throw some extra soft plastics in there so I don't have to dig in the bag for them if I know what they're hitting on that particular day. Now on the left hand side, that's where I keep my tackle box that has all my jig heads and my rigging hooks. Again, I keep them up in front so I don't have to reach behind me when I need one. And they're right here out of the way but in easy access. Now in the center console, I keep a bag, a little waterproof bag that has all of my water sensitive electronics, my GoPro batteries, my GoPro battery chargers, an extra GoPro, some microphones and that stuff. It goes in this bag inside that center console so I don't have to worry about any water splashing on it and ruin any of that equipment. So in my right hand cup holder, I'll keep an extra couple of soft plastics in there so that way if some get tore up, I don't have to reach in the tackle box behind me to find some. And then the ones that do get tore up, I'll put them on the left hand side so when I'm loading up the kayak, I'll know which ones are good and which ones are bad. I'll also put in my rigging hooks in the left hand side so I know they have to be rinsed off before I store them away. When I'm out on the water, I always wear a life jacket, and this is the one that I really like. It's called an Astral Sturgeon. It's got a large pocket in the front where I can keep a lot of stuff, but what's really cool, it's got these little clips where I can put my tools, like my little banjo tool, and then I can keep my needle nose pliers, and they're on me at all times. When you're out on the water, you really don't want to be fumbling around trying to look for this stuff, so it's nice to have it on you where it's accessible. Now this is one of my favorite finds that I've ever had on the water. It's actually a five pound dumbbell that was at the bottom of some floating rope that I found in the water. Well, when I pulled the rope up, I saw the dumbbell and I quickly converted that into my kayak anchor. I just tied it to some paracord that's on a reel. Now I don't use it that often, but when I do need an anchor, this is what I'm using. 
Now in the very back, this is where I keep my angle dry box. This is actually what I use as a tackle box. This is where I keep all my lures in. And I've got a video that I did where I explain exactly what I keep in this box. But basically what I have is all my soft plastics that are separated by size and type in different Ziploc bags. So I can keep them a little bit more organized. But it really works out well for me. And I like the fact that it latches closed. So if I ever was to lose it, then I'm not going to lose all of the stuff that's in it. It'll all stay with the dry box and it'll be easy to recover. Now on the side of the dry box, there are two rod holders and this is where I keep my extra rod. So I have one in front, one in the back and I'll rotate these rods out depending on the needs on how I'm fishing and what I'm fishing for that day. But this is where the two extra ones go. Now over on the other side, this is where I keep my little plug for when I pull my drive out. This is what keeps the water from you know coming in whenever the drive is taken out of it. But this is where I keep it most of the time. Now over on this side, this is a prime example of what not to do. If you are new to kayaking, make sure and go out and fish in your kayak the way that you want to. And that way you'll figure out where you want some things at. I thought I wanted a rod holder back here, so I drilled a couple of holes. And now I've got a rod holder that I never use with a, a couple of holes in my kayak that didn't need to be there. So make sure you need the rod holder where you want it before you start drilling a hole in it. Now this is where I keep the paddle. It's got a little bungee cord that keeps it in place. This is where it's at most of the time. I typically am using the pedals. The paddle is typically there just for a push pull when I'm standing up and fishing. I also keep a towel attached to the side of the chair. That way I've got something to keep my hands dry and get the slime off of it and uh, wipe things off. That's a nice little thing to have right there. Now my particular model of kayak has this removable kickstand that's there to help load and unload. So if you've seen it in the video, that's what it's there. It's just there to protect the rudder while you're unloading the kayak. Now on the left hand side you'll see I have a shallow water anchor pin and I have that attached to a anchor trolley. These two things are invaluable when you're fishing in shallow water. It keeps you in position and also keeps you from getting pulled into a school of fish whenever you are fighting that one fish. It's a great tool to have. Now this is one of my favorite accessories for the kayak. This is called a Sea Tug. It's made by Railblazer. It's made to carry your kayak around and I've used this on three separate ones. I've treated it rather poorly and it's held up so great. If you don't have a kayak cart, I definitely recommend getting this one. It's called a Sea Tug. So this is what the setup looks like when it's ready to fish out on the water. Now everything's always a work in progress, but with some tweaks, I've been able to get this exactly where I want it. I'd like to hear your opinions, what you like about it, what you don't like about it, what you would do differently, and some things that stood out to you. Just put those down in the comments below. Okay, so that wraps up the walkthrough of the kayak, and I hope that answers some questions that you might have had. Now, this is my typical setup. I usually use the same thing because I'm usually fishing the same type of water for the same type of fish. Now, I will vary, you know, the rods that I bring with me and some of the setups that I do, but for the most part, this is the typical setup. So, if you have any questions or comments, put those down below, and I'll try to answer those as soon as I can. And if you like videos like this where we show you organizational skills and even how to catch more fish, we have tons of those videos available in our live library at saltstrong.com slash fishing tips or you can go in there and check it out there's just a lot of information in there and if you really want to step up your fishing game then i highly recommend checking us out in the insider club where we have tens of thousands of insiders in there all sharing information and gaining knowledge on how to become a better angler so check that out at saltstrong.com and the insiders club so i really appreciate you watching the video and being a traveling fishing coach you never know where i'm going to end up next and if i don't see you out on the water then i'll see you in the next video have a great day thanks Bye.